In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the probability calculator mode in GeoGebra. This is a very useful way to avoid having to use those probability tables that you might have seen in older versions of A-level maths. Um, to get into this mode, if you click on View and drop the way down to Probability Calculator, you won't be too surprised to know that it opens up a probability calculator window. Um, it starts off showing you a normal distribution. I'm actually going to come back to that in a moment. The first thing is to realize that you can make this bigger, uh, which might be useful if you want to do this in a classroom and have on a projector, and you can move stuff around. Before I do that, I'm going to start with a binomial distribution. If I make this window so you can see it, I can drop down from it. You can see I can choose distributions for random variables. In fact, all of these distributions at the top are continuous distributions, and all the ones at the bottom are uh, discrete ones. I'm going to start with a binomial distribution, um, and this maybe is looking familiar. A uh, good thing to know, first of all, is you can change the way this looks. It's showing you the uh, probabilities of certain outcomes. Um, so I can actually since it's discrete, it might be better to realize that these things are not connected uh, in a continuous way. We've just got uh, individual outcomes. We can't get between 8 and 9. Um, binomial is counting something. That's what the distribution does. At the moment, it's got 20 trials. That's what this N stands for, and a probability of each thing being successful at 0.5. If I change this to make it less symmetrical, if I change it to be, say, 0.15, you can see that the distribution changes, which is maybe what you expect. What's really nice about this is you can see it straight away. You can see this is uh, it's much more likely to be out of 20 trials, and there's only a 15% chance of getting a success. We get a sort of an average outcome of much lower than in the middle. Even better than that, you can calculate the exact probabilities. At the moment, it's calculating the probability of this random variable being between 8 and 12, and it's telling me that's very low, and that's visible on screen, although it's not particularly obvious. And to make it clearer, I'm just going to turn the bar chart back on even though if this is maybe less correct for a continue, uh, discrete distribution. You can see I can, I can drag these points around and I can color in the bits I care about. So now it's telling me the probability of getting between 3 and 5 inclusively is represented by these blue things. It's nice to see it, but it gives me the calculation straight away, 0.5278. Actually, it also shows you over on the right the probabilities of each individual outcome. And if you add those three together, 3, 4, and 5, those probabilities, we will get the 0.5278. This is exactly like what you might have calculated from a calculator or by looking up in the old-fashioned probability tables. It's very flexible, though. If you want to do a one-sided probability, just to say the probability of x being less than or equal to 5, there it is, and I've only got one thing to move around. I can change that by putting that to 4, and you can see it's highlighting the numbers and the bars and giving me the calculation. I can even uh, just type in uh, 3.5. Uh, it's not going to do that because it recognizes this is a discrete distribution, but I could type in whatever I want here, and it would move the graphic. I could also type in, well, like I said, where do I have to go? How many trials would give me a 50% chance? And it tells me the closest one to get that is, uh, is 3, and actually gives me a 65% chance. So this is a pretty useful way of seeing probability chances uh, for a binomial distribution. And as you've noticed, we can also do this with other distributions. So let's look quickly at a continuous one. The normal one is a classic. Um, it's defaulting to a, a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And I can drag these things around in the same way. So if I make it two-sided, I can see the chance of being between uh, uh, minus 1 and plus 1 of a standard deviation away from the mean is about 69%, that should, uh, 68%, that should be a familiar number. Notice it's not giving the actual values down the side because this is continuous, so there's no probability for a specific value, there's only probabilities for regions, but just as before I can drag these regions. So if I say what's the probability of getting uh, just bigger uh, than zero, for example, we should see exactly half of the time will get bigger than zero because the other half of the time will get less than zero if the mean is zero. But I can change the mean to be five and the standard deviation to be something else. And you see the picture doesn't really change, but the numbers on the scale are changing. And I can choose whatever sort of thing to color in I like. And it always is calculating things both forward and back. This time it will be precise. If I want to know where is a quarter percent uh, chance of like, how low, then it's telling me that will happen at 3.651. This is an extremely flexible thing, and the final thing to mention is that you can put it into the main GeoGebra window by clicking on Copy to Graphics View. And if I close this Probability Calculator window, we now get it in this zoomable and scalable, but things still move around, uh, which is great, and even the probability is still being calculated. It's doing this by integrating, in fact. Uh, let's not worry too much about it. But this is uh, an extremely flexible way to visualize probabilities and just to calculate them should you need to on the fly.